Hi everyone, I'm Brian Davis. In this video, I'm going to show you some footage of dugongs in the UAE. I was challenged by Blue Horizon. So now we've completed your challenge, Holly is going to set your challenge for you. We want you to find a dugong for us. I've never seen a dugong, so I'd like you to video this dugong so that I can see my first dugong through the computer screen. So I hope you accept the challenge, Brian. Um, unfortunately, we're not permitted to dive with dugongs in the UAE for very good reason. They are very highly protected and because of that um, a population which was in decline many years ago is now on the rebound. And when you think that a, a healthy dugong population can only increase maximum by 5% a year and the UAE has doubled its population over the last 15 to 20 years, um, that's an amazing result. So I for one am happy not to dive with dugongs. However, challenge is a challenge, and I can't just welsh out. So I have a friend, Oliver Farrell, who's involved in um, studying dugongs, coral reefs, everything in the region. And he has given me, and given me permission to use some amazing um, footage, drone footage of dugongs in the wild, a, a big herd of dugongs off the coast of Abu Dhabi, Island, which is amazing because most of the dugongs are in the western region in an island called uh, Butina. Um, but this drone footage just goes to prove how successful the UAE and Abu Dhabi in particular has been at allowing dugongs um, to live naturally undisturbed in the wild. Um, the government has done so many things to protect them, including banning several types of fishing. So I hope you'll enjoy the footage. We'll talk a bit more about the dugongs at the end of the, of the um, footage. Thanks for watching. This footage is of a herd of dugongs seen earlier this year. I, I believe it was in April, um, close to the Sadiat Reef, close to Abu Dhabi um, city, um, which is amazing because this is outside of the marine protected areas. Um, and to see such a, a herd thriving is truly amazing and testament to the Abu Dhabi government's commitment to saving the dugong not just in the UAE but in other countries as well. Um, here the dugong is highly protected. Um, there are two federal laws, federal law 23 and 24 which protect the dugong and its seagrass habitats. Um, the UAE has established two marine protected areas covering almost 6,500 square kilometers and fishing regulations have been changed that now only allow the use of traditional fishing gear, drift nets, shark net fishing is completely banned. So that is really amazing. The um, Mohammed bin Zayed Species Conservation Fund um, is the executing agency of the Dugong and seagrass conservation project which is based in Abu Dhabi. To date the fund has supported nearly 1500 projects in 150 countries. Um, seagrass meadows, um, vibrant seagrass meadows are key to maintaining healthy populations of dugongs and of course turtles. A little bit about the dugong. The dugong is the is the only herbivorous marine marine mammal. That means it feeds solely on vegetation, in particular seagrass. Although I understand in some parts of the world people have fed them iceberg lettuce. Not that I'm recommending that. Um, dugongs need to be left well alone. If stressed and the, the interaction with humans, boats, divers, even drones if they're flown very low will stress um, dugongs and what happens to dugongs when they're stressed 
is the breeding cycle is interrupted. So dugongs will not breed if they are permanently stressed and also if they don't have access to enough seagrass. Dugongs typically remain underwater for 3 to 12 minutes while feeding and travelling and they can eat up to 7% of their body weight per day. So if you've got a big um, dugong weighing at 500 kilos he's going to be eating 35 um, possibly um, 40 kilos of seagrass per day. Dugongs occur in over 40 countries in the Indian Ocean and Western Pacific Ocean and are able to move into different home ranges traveling hundreds of kilometers in a few days. I have personally I have no great desire to dive with dugongs. Um, for me, I want to leave them in peace, let them have healthy habitats, let them reproduce and just be able now and again to look at um, footage like you've just seen this amazing aerial footage. Um, researchers and scientists do take underwater footage and I fully support that and they do publish it and release it on, on YouTube videos and other websites. So that's the best place to see a dugong. So let's leave them alone, leave them in peace and hopefully they'll be here for our kids and their kids. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm quite um, positive for dugongs. They're listed as a vulnerable species so it's not all bad news. And with the work that the Australian government and the UAE government are doing, um, um, populations are coming back or increasing. The Australian, Australia has the world's largest population of dugongs, I think in the region of over 80,000. The Arabian Gulf comes second with around 7,000 and around 3,900 of those are in the UAE, mainly in, in Abu Dhabi. Um, Abu Dhabi has been fantastic in, in driving conservation of dugongs worldwide. Um, they were the main driver and the headquarters for the MOU on the conservation of dugongs. It's based in Abu Dhabi and was driven by Abu Dhabi. That's, um, I think, 31 nations out of 46 that have dugongs and seagrass habitats have signed that agreement. Um, you can see um, just in this graphic um, who signed and, and who hasn't and the range of the dugong. So that's really good. They also um, headquarter the dugong and seagrass um, project which is an NGO um, based out of Abu Dhabi and they do amazing work. Um, I've got links to um, both the MOU and to the um, dugong and seagrass project in the links below. So do what I did, you know, and given the challenge, I went and learned about them, and it's it's really amazing. And these creatures, um, they were hunted for meat and oil, and to a certain extent, in the Torres State in Australia, up near the Barrier Reef, they are still allowed to be hunted by the indigenous Aboriginal people who feel it's their right. But the good news is, some of these um, groups of people have decided to forego that cultural hunting in order to preserve the species. So I'm, as I mentioned in the, in the intro, I'm very positive for the dugong. If all the nations who have dugongs and dugong habitats pull together, um, I think we'll see the dugongs um, for a long, long time to come, probably forever. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe and notify button. My name's Brian Davis, see you next time.